What's up, everybody? This is Generation Urge. And we're not in our normal place because we are actually viewing a property that Carlos has just finished up and put on the market and actually has a contract under contract for this beautiful property. Where is it located? Uh, Southside. Southside. Richmond, Virginia, baby. Yeah, Southside, Richmond, Virginia. 23, 23, no, it is 23223 or 224? 23224. Yeah. And what's the exact address, Carlos? I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna walk you through. Uh, we're gonna do a quick video. You're gonna walk through. I'm gonna point out exactly what we've done, how much everything costs, what I bought it for, my holding costs closing costs, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go over those numbers and then that way you can kind of, get a, kind of get an idea of what's something that you could still buy. I think I bought this like mid or, or third quarter of 2022. So you'll still get numbers in a very changing market. All right, let's yeah. go ahead. All right, so this house we bought, uh, I, I believe it was like July, we bought it for 85,000. We bought this in combination with another one. So there were two houses, same owner, same wholesaler, and they brought both of them to me and I bought both at the same day. So we didn't do any siding, as you can tell from the exterior, we did paint and we did replace all the windows. See, so all this is old siding. All right. We did replace all the light fixtures. We did re uh, obviously put new numbers in. We yeah, do that's crucial, by the way, guys. Very having, crucial. Having you won't numbers. even get appraised without numbers. So definitely new numbers. We changed the front door. The front door was shot, but I think it also adds a whole lot of character when we add uh, a whole new front door, especially when you stain it like that. So let me take you inside. This was a very different house when we first bought it. Very different house. So much darker. You can tell, you can see all the way through to the kitchen. It's not something that you could have seen before because there were two walls in between. So there was a wall right up here. Okay. And there was another wall right in front of that fridge, kind of like where that uh, picture frame is. Yeah. So all the way through, there was another wall and that was access to the kitchen. Was it load bearing? It was not load bearing. So that was something that was very intentional. This entire wall that you see over to your, that side, <laughs> That entire thing is load bearing. And that's why we didn't touch that. We just left the opening here for this for this area for the bedrooms and the bathroom. So we opened all this up. As you can tell, we have newer flooring. We did not do new sheetrock on the walls, so all that was just skim coating, and we patched up some stuff. What's skim coating mean? Skim coating is putting a very thin le level or layer of plaster or joint compound on top of the plaster walls. So that lath and and plaster the yucky wall that <laughs> you get in all these old houses. We just kept putting plaster or joint compound over top of it and we did that three or four or even five times depending on how bad it was. We just kept doing that to the point where it was nice and flat and looks like new. And then you just sand water. it and paint it, right? And you just sand it and you paint it, exactly. So we have the living room we walk past. We have a little dining room, super cute. We have the fridge. We did fully appliance this house because of the price point. You did we what? what did you fully say? appliance. So oh, we, did, okay. we did do all the appliances with the exception of the washer and dryer machine. That's right. right so what, the lower price point houses, you wouldn't do appliances? I do. So we're starting to do appliances on the lower priced houses. Oh, the higher price, you don't do appliances. We don't, yeah, we don't. And the reason for that, had a couple conversations, had very wise people uh, mention that in the lower priced houses or priced homes, it's a little bit, because people are usually reaching a little bit outside of their price bracket or they don't want to be house poor. So sometimes they're overreaching with the price of the house. So then overextending themselves and putting aside an extra couple of grand or $3,000 for appliances is really pushing it for a lot of them. So we just include it in and we make it as part of the price of the house. And in that way they can just re they can finance that on the purchase instead of coming out of pocket when they buy the house. All right, yeah. All right, so here, small kitchen, super cute though, so we put a lot of attention. We did go with quartz. I do subway tile. You, you can kind of tell here, we did subway tile, but instead of going horizontal, we did vertical. So that's something that I'm starting to implement in, in my flips because it does give it a little bit more of a classy style. You can probably tell a little bit more on like these walls here. So it gives a little bit more of a classy style, but then we can still keep to the price point of 12 to 15 cents per tile and keep my costs low on flips like this. And all new cabinets, right, in here? All new cabinets. Um, it is getting really hard to source appliances. So some of the appliances are new. Some of the appliances are... Scrap. Refurbished. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap. 
<laughs> refurbished or they're newer, just a little dented. Uh, so we do have a pantry that's very unusual for a house of this size. Yeah. And in this pantry, we also have a, electric box. an electrical panel. Yeah. That's that. Um, we did market this house as a two bedroom, one bath. It was 900 and some square feet, but we did have a secret, uh, not a secret, but like a bonus for anybody that was coming to take a look at that this house. We didn't market this as a bedroom. And we kind of did that strategically. This is an office. You did it, you said, right? We didn't do, yeah, we didn't market it as a three bedroom. And in a way it was done strategically. It's two closets. This is a tankless water heater. This is a small house. So we wanted to take up as little space as possible and then just like a regular closet. So although it has a closet, although it has a window, although it has a door with private entrance and HVAC exit, right? So you can get heat and cooling in this room. We didn't market it as a bedroom because it's a seven and a half by seven and a half big, right? So it doesn't quite make up a room size, like yeah. a full room size. So we wanted to uh, just do a two bed, one bath so that when people came through, and noticed that, that there was this extra room. They were pleasantly surprised and it could be an art studio, it could be an office for working from home, it could be whatever, right? So that was just like a big big plus that we were doing. Now it does in a way kind of put us in a different um, bracket of housing, right? So like our price points are ARVs, but we weren't gonna be wanting to push pricing anyways. We wanted to be fairly conservative and you'll see our numbers. I'll give you my numbers at, at the very end. So stick around. Now, I, if it were me, I would have done it as a three bedroom. I would have added that as a bedroom. We did get that a lot of that feedback, but we decided not to do it. Yeah. Uh, so like I was saying, it's a two bedroom house. This is one. We are starting to put fans up. Really? Yeah. Oh, just yeah. your flips though. Not yeah, your not, 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 not rentals. You but, used to not put fans? No, because I'm, I'm from up north and we don't do we don't do fans up north. Do you think that really makes a difference with buyers though? Probably not. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But fans are twenty fans are forty dollars and then the lights are twenty five. So but they're also a lot more labor to put in a lot more time to put up. Oh maybe. Like, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little yeah. bit. Alright, so this is the bathroom. You can tell again the uh, horizontal tile and we do all black fixtures. That's kind of the new modern thing is the black fixtures. Yeah. Okay. I like the black fixture. And then, oh wait, they we can't are see. in. <clears throat> Voila. Voila. Now we're into, I guess, I don't know, the other bedroom. <laughs> Carlos's it's, happy room. It's, it's a decent sized room. There's a queen size bed. There's plenty of space on both sides. There's a closet. Plenty of space for a dresser. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig up some pictures and I'll show you guys what this thing looked like before. It was... Horrible. 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 All right, so let's go over some numbers here. All right. So, so what'd, you, what'd you buy this for, Carlos? Bought it for 85. 85, and like you said, he got it from a wholesaler, right? He got it from a wholesaler. Okay. So I, I think I was able to get a pretty decent price because I bought two from the same wholesaler, same seller. So the same person owned it before. So I've only invested 65,000 on the renovations. Now, we do do quite a bit. We did a roof, we did windows, we did new floors, fixed up the walls bathroom, kitchen, the whole bit. I mean, we, we did absolutely everything in this house, but mind you, this house is like 900 and some square feet. So it's on the smaller end. So when you say 65K, does that include your front end closing costs that or any not, holding costs at that all? Does, that does not. So it's okay. 65,000 just for construction costs. Then we spent uh, $10,000 in holding costs. And what does holding costs mean? Holding costs are any points that you have to pay up front or on the back end from the lender, plus any interest that's accruing throughout the duration of the loan. And taxes and insurance, right? And taxes and insurance, yeah. Okay. And taxes and insurance. So that's all holding costs. And utilities, Bills, I guess. utilities, yeah. yeah. So then we have closing costs. So the back end closing costs, I don't have an exact number for that yet, but we're assuming that it's gonna be about $3,500, okay. right? Um, on the front end, we paid close to five thousand dollars. So that twenty five hundred is that including realtor fees? That does not include realtor okay. fees. So that just includes just transactions, taxes, and this. I mean, just just any of the processing that needs to happen during the closing. So um, I don't know. I guess paperwork that needs to be yeah, done, title work, title work, whatever. Just appraisals, like, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, they usually pay for appraisals. Oh yeah, the buyer. Um, and then I have another thirteen thousand for agent fees. So agent fees, 
from my agent and the agent that's representing the buyer, we did do a proper 3% on both sides. So that's how we're getting to 13,000. So okay. it's 3% of 225,000. Okay, so we got 85 purchase. 85 purchase. 65. Um, 65 reno. Reno uh, only. Holding cost. Hold yep. cost. Yep, 10,000. So that puts us at 160? Uh, so that's 140, 150, 160, yeah. Then we're at 167, so 7,000 for closing costs. So 7,000 7, for closing costs. And then 13,000 for agent fees. Okay, so right now your total 180. All 80. 180 is his predicted all, all probably all, will be his all in costs. All uh, in, yeah. Now we did get an inspection. There are some things that we're going to have to fix and repair and, and, and fix up, but let's call it 180 is what I'm going to be all in on this uh, renovation. Now we did list the house um, and we listed it for 225, right? Okay. We went under contract. We had two offers and we went under contract within 24 hours for full ask at 225. So the spread there between 180 and 225 is $45,000. So we'll be making $45,000 before taxes on the rent on, on the flip of this house. Wow. It did take us a while, maybe like six months. Wow. By the time it closes, it'd be like five, six months. And uh, how much cash of your, how much cash did you have to put into this deal? Like how much did you borrow versus <clears throat> cash you put into the deal? Um, so we ended up borrowing one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars okay. uh, for this constru- for for this project. So if you put, uh, I guess the only thing of the one hundred and eighty that you have you can back out are the agent fees because you don't agent pay that until the back. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to the back end. So you're at like what one hundred and sixty-seven. Yep, one hundred and sixty-seven, and I borrowed one hundred and twenty-five. So that's twenty. Uh, 30, sorry, thirty-two. Uh, Forty-two. Um, one twenty. Yeah, that's forty-two thousand dollars. So I had to come out of pocket $42,000 and I doubled it. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So 42,000 we're walking out with. So that's how you double your money in six months. Yeah. 42,000. If I had done it in my Roth IRA, yeah. I wouldn't have to pay taxes on No. no. Yeah. You could have <laughs> no, done it in Roth. I wouldn't be able to do that because I'm involved. But yeah, but yeah there, there are ways for you to double your money for sure. Um, but yeah, we're going to be making $45,000 in, I don't know, call it six months. All right, cool. Yeah. And after taxes, you're probably making what, like 30? If you watch our old video um, that's already been posted about how to, um, uh, what is it? How to, how to, how how to, to avoid. avoid. <laughs> how to avoid. No, what things uh, to do at the end of the year. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to, so uh, I'm going to be implementing some of those strategies for next year so I don't have to pay so much in taxes for my gains on this project or any other projects going forward. Yeah, because you'll be paying short-term capital gains on this one too yeah. since you held it for less than a year, yeah, which is less than a year. significantly more than long-term capital gains. Yeah. All right, well, any closing remarks, old Carlos? Um, it's scary, but it's doable, and everybody can make money. No, not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can make money doing this. Just don't be scared, money. guys. Don't, don't be, scared. be scared. Just jump in and make a house look beautiful. Make some mistakes. <laughs> You'll learn from them. Carlos made a bunch, right, Carlos? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is it. Make sure to subscribe. Any questions you have for me or Carlos, let them know. Notification bell, let us comments. Know. Yeah, let us know if we, he went over the numbers good enough. Hopefully he's not lying about his numbers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you share your friends, tell your friends. And this if you guys like these, if you guys like the walkthroughs, we're always going through projects. He's always working on a rental or a turn or a flip or something. So we can always do, we can go through Daryl's projects. So if you guys like it, just put a thumbs up in the comment below and we'll keep doing these guys. Yeah, and sorry if the camera's a little shaky because my arm has been getting a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> my arm's gonna be sore tomorrow. All right, that was Generation A.